In 2020, I received an email saying, would I like to be considered to sculpt a bust, which is essentially a portrait of the Queen and Prince Philip for the hall. And so obviously I wrote back saying, yes, please consider me. And the competition process took over a year. So I never really dared imagine that I might actually win it. I saw it as a good learning opportunity and a fantastic chance to put my background in the history of art and my training in figurative sculpture together. Approaching commission of this magnitude was entirely different to anything I'd done before. Normally I will do a commission portrait or a figure with a model in my studio and in both cases you have many hours with that person and as the hours slip by you get to know them, you get a sense of their character and you can watch their body move or their facial features change as they speak and you can collect these moments and um, if you, you know things are going well you'll create a sense of them, of their presence or essence or spirit. With this commission I didn't have the physical presence of the Queen or Prince Philip and even if I had had access to them, it wouldn't have been for long enough to create two metre monuments. So I had to put my background in the history of art to good use and research what were the most meaningful symbols and how could I technically convey them. They perhaps have one of the greatest marriages and partnerships of our time and that maybe I could sculpt a love story as much as I could sculpt a representation of our Queen and Prince Philip. So I thought quite an exciting and contemporary way to represent them would be in civilian dress. And the highest form of civilian dress is white tie for a gentleman and evening dress for a woman. So I went to Gibbs and Hawks, the Royal Warrant Holding Suit Company, and they lent me white tie and fitted it to my model Jack, who posed for Philip. Similarly, with my model Megan, we went to Cornelia James, the glove makers, and Cornelia had made gloves for the Queen throughout um, her own life. The real monuments are over two metres each, and so I was up and down a ladder creating them. But before I could even get out my ladder, I had to create movable bases onto which to build armatures. Armatures are the metal structure made of welded steel and flexible aluminium that go deep inside a clay figure. And I build my sculptures in clay from the inside out. So first I worked with life models to set the more anatomical features, such as where would the knees be in space? and then to dress the sculptures. So if you look at the way Prince Philip is striding out, you would never believe that stride if you didn't um, look at it and completely accept the fact that this foot is attached to the knee, which is attached to the hip. And so it's a very gradual process of building the sculptures with clay, water-based clay from the inside out. I had nine months to do the clay sculpting bit, after which they went to the foundry. I worked with an incredible foundry called Pangolin Editions, and they're in Gloucestershire. The foundry is the place where your sculpture transforms from clay to bronze. This begins with making a mould. The mould is used to create a wax, the wax is used to create the bronze. So it's a process of birth, rebirth, I suppose. It requires a lot of technical skill, and so I was very lucky to work with such an experienced foundry. I thought a fitting way of representing their shared lifetime of service would be to create one composition across the entire South Porch facade. And in thinking of this one composition, it occurred to me that Prince Philip, a man as modern as tomorrow, was also the Queen's strength and stay. And he was known for following a couple of steps behind her. And the Queen, who gave us this amazing sense of stability during times of enormous social change, was there for us, the public. And so being able to convey Prince Philip Looking over to the Queen meant that viewers in the West, who typically read from left to right, would follow his gaze. They'll follow, follow him looking over to the Queen, who looks out to the public, which would engage the viewer. And because she's turning into the hall, the viewer should then feel encouraged to go into the building too. And that was important because the Royal Albert Hall has been known as the nation's village hall. So it was a love story, but also with the romantic appeal that involves the nation. One thing I adore about these reductions is the fact that you can see them in the round. Something that was almost heartbreaking about this commission was I'd spent so many months sculpting my figures with as much authenticity and integrity as possible, which meant giving Philip his hands clasped behind his back even though they wouldn't be seen, or placing a diamond bar brooch at the back of the Queen's ribbon to hold it in place even though it wouldn't be seen. 
was then having these sculptures go up into the niches and know, and know that was lost to the public. So the wonderful thing about having the reductions is that they can be enjoyed in the round and also at eye level. It was very moving that the sculptures were unveiled by their son, King Charles, and also his wife, Queen Camilla, on Armistice Day. It was a day of remembrance. And I'm really proud that they got to see them and also that they will have opportunities in the future to see them in the daytime and hopefully from a distance.